Despite all your efforts, some people are gonna challenge you and force you to do some next collection steps. The best way is to figure out what's gonna be right for you. And when I say next steps, that's you've exhausted everything. You've tried to do a payment plan. You've tried to rely on their good judgment to send you that payment or to make a payment in the portal. So despite that, they've challenged you and you're gonna to have to make that decision whether we're gonna file the lien, whether we're going to um, send it to an attorney, whether we're gonna send it to a collection agency or do a little DIY work at small claims court if you're able to. I recommend the combo platter. Don't limit yourself, don't say, we just use an attorney or we just use a collection agency. You've got to have some freedom to be able to maneuver around. Your biggest challenge, and, and that's something that you need to work through, is to find what service is going to be right for you. So it's going to take you reviewing some collection agencies, some attorneys, and then brushing up on what small claims court would be like for you. Small claims court is a great avenue there and, and we'll talk through what exactly that looks like when you go but something to remember about small claims court is that you are basically your own representation so if you can't hold it together and listen to a lot of negative things about yourself by the other side it's exactly like watching judge judy and there's always one side that gets reprimanded a whole bunch for running their mouth all you have to do is show up answer the questions and have your documentation and you bring it in three so you don't have to share with anybody out there to the judge. Let the other side go nuts. And unfortunately, they do, because people get very passionate when they wanna paint a negative picture of you. So standing there listening to somebody basically talk about how you're a subpar human being, uh, your lineage is pretty sure out of the jungle, um, you eat babies for breakfast, you're the worst person on the planet, you, um, you lie, cheat, steal, you'll say anything, you work for a giant corporation, it's not fair, they're here to crush the little guy. Yeah, look, we're just here to make a living like everybody else. Doesn't matter the size or scale of your company. But standing in court, listening to somebody else basically lie about every single thing, point to you, call you names, use profanity in front of the judge, which she was not a fan of, and, and point to you is, is unnerving and unsettling, and you have to learn to bite your tongue. And it's very hard, especially when you're a very opinionated human being. And it's not true. And you wanna defend yourself. You have to go against the natural grain of wanting to defend yourself and go, seriously, who didn't pay who? You can say anything you want, pretty much. So can the other side. Your best bet is to be able to go in there with your information, make three copies, one for you, one for the judge, and one for the deadbeat, and to be able to present that. Here's the credit application, here's the statement of account, they're not paying us, the promises were all broken. Boom, shut up. Then let the other side, the judge is gonna ask you a couple questions, the other side will present whatever they're going to present, and the judge will make a ruling. Maybe not that same day, typically it can go either way, they can either give it to you right then, and then you just go over to the clerk of the court and record it, or they'll tell you, hey, we need to send this to you and in a few days, and then you still have to go to the clerk of the court. If you can't go and you're sending someone in your stead, like a branch manager or a salesperson, make sure you choose somebody who is level-headed and able to self-edit. It would do good for you to create a, here's how to go to small claims court book, right down to timing that they need to get there and what you should wear. Again, you wanna make sure you're setting someone up for success. If you can't go to court and you're sending somebody, make them as prepared as possible. But be respectful, you're in a court of law. One thing to keep in mind with small claims court that may knock that out of the running for you and force you to go to an attorney is the state limits. Some states are as low as $1,500, which is like, why bother? And some let you go up to 20, 25,000. So depending on how much is out there, if you have a debt for 5,000 and your state limit is four, it may behoove you to, to wipe out $1,000 because you would do that on attorney's fees. Or you know, depending on what your, your credit application said, attorney's fees, interest, all of those things, you might wanna go ahead and go, mm, we're gonna go ahead and sue. We're gonna go ahead and, and give this to an attorney. And at least have the attorney take a look at it and go, yeah, it's really not worth the, the, the juice and the squeeze. And that's something else you wanna look at before you decide to take some steps and spend your company's money, is what's the viability of this account? It doesn't do you any good to get very expensive wallpaper. So if you get a judgment, 
that's one piece. Like you get through court, you get through small claims, you, whatever it is, the, the collection agency eventually has to sue. However you're going about that, eventually you will get a judgment. The judgment is just the gateway to the next part of the process. So if they don't have anything, if, if you're suing, let's say a dead guy and there's nothing in the estate, you're getting nothing. So you might just have to fold up your tent and go home. Mechanics liens have a, a really unique place in the collections process. Because at any point that you're talking to the company that you're trying to collect from, if you have lien rights out there, you need to be reminding them of that. And that's gonna be something that can take the place of any one of the DIY, you know, small claims court, collection agency, or attorney-driven litigation. So you can wedge that in there. You can also, don't be fooled that you can't do multiple things. You can file your mechanics lien and you can also move to suit. You just can't be enriched by both. So when one pays, you have to let go of the other. But I like more pressure is better. If, if we're gonna throw down, let's really throw down. How, how bad did this get? If you're working with someone and they're like, look, I can't get paid, go ahead and file the, the mechanics lien. I might back off and give them some space and hey, let's work together on this. If it's someone that I'm fighting and having to drag to the table, then there's a couple different avenues I'm gonna go after. And mechanics lien, I go ahead and pull the trigger. Do not lose lien rights because you think you can sue. Never, ever, ever lose lien rights. You can't get them back, it's over once you let those go. So even if you're thinking, I have collection action coming, that's a supplement to the mechanics lien. So in the big picture, never lose those. Know that these are back there. This is just a small taste of a much larger class. You can take the full class for free at levelset.com. Join me.